Para next week, ano tayo, for, for complication. Um, so, ito yung last topic ng, uh, ng partnership, yung partnership liquidation na alam natin siya. Most of us hate it, diba? Ayaw na ayaw natin ito. Uh, kasi dami yung ginagawa. Eh. And, kung, ano lang yun, uh, itong partnership liquidation, um, ito yung isa sa mga pinakamasakit na pwede mangyari sa partnership. Bakit? Kasi ito yung time na mag-iwalay na sila. Tapos, yung masaklap pa doon na yung pag iwalay na yan, it comes with a price. Kaya may presyo pa. So, parang, ayoko na sa'yo, tangin na kaya ito, sa milyo. Kasi lakit eh. Kaya presyohan ko yung pag-ihiwalay natin. One, one million. No? Yun na yung, yung, yung liquidation na yan. Eh. And alam natin, um, nung undergrad, nung undergrad tayo, so dalawa yun, no? um, it's either lump sum liquidation or yung installment niya. Na hate na hate natin kasi ang dami talagang ginagawa. Now, first of all muna, um, paano mo muna malalaman kung lump sum yun or installment. Well, it all boils down to this, uh, when you, how you sell your non-cash asset. Then, kasi yun, hindi mo malalaman kung lump sum siya or installment. Uh, if you sell all of your non-cash assets, definitely, lump sum liquidation yan. Pero kapag yung non-cash asset natin, binenta mo siya by, part by part, definitely installment yan. So, yun yung clue natin, yung guide natin para malaman. So, dun sa Uh, dun sa installment liquidation na lalo, ito yung pinakaayaw natin kasi uh, there are two methods nung tinuro sa atin sa undergrad, di ba? Dalawa yun. Na ito yung safe payment, tapos or yung cash priority, wherein either dun sa dalawa na gagamitin mo, dapat pareho lang yung sagot na makukuha, di ba? Yun yung ginagawa ng undergrad. Well, nung time na yun, nung nag-aaral din ako, uh, medyo hirap na hirap din ako sa liquidation. Honestly, hirap na hirap din ako. Kaso nga lang, sa dami-dami kong sinagutan na, so doon naging professor na ako, nagturo na ako, sa dami-dami kong sinagutan na problem. And meron akong isang napapansin na it is consistent all throughout. So ibig sabihin, um, it is applicable for both lump sum and installment. Na pare-pareho talaga, yun at yun din. So I came up with something different. Ito na ho yun. So parang kakalimutan mo na yung safe payment, kakalimutan mo na yung CPP. Eh kasi parehong-pareho lang talaga yung lumalabas. Now, bago natin i-discuss yung in-detail yung discount, eh, um, titignan mo na natin on, on how the limitation process go, kung paano nga naman siya nangyayari. So unang-una muna, why do the partnership liquidate? Eh kasi wala na silang pera and marami na, marami na silang utang actually. Uh, yun yung hindi uh, na kayo bayaran, yung utang nila. So, anong gagawin? Well, unang-una, they sell their non-cash assets. Uh, bakit? Kasi kailangan i-convert lahat yun sa cash, eh, kasi dami natin babayaran. Eh. Yun yung unang-una talaga. Tapos second, they pay the liquidation expenses. After that, lahat ng outside creditors. Sir, sino po yung outside creditors? Yun yung third-party creditors natin, or the liability of the partnership. Yun muna yung babayaran bago yung interest ng partners. So, when you say interest ng partners, yan po yung capital balance nila. Uh, plus minus yung loan balance natin. So, again, kung sa'yo mong interest, uh, yan po yung capital plus minus yung loan balance. So, kung gagawin mo siyang in sequence, bago matanggap ng partner yung interest nila, kailangan bayaran mo na yung outside creditors. Yan talaga yung general rule. So, when you say interest, at ibinigay na yung computation, um, capital balance plus minus yung loan, Now, when it comes to the loan balance, sir, paano namin uh, malalaman kung i-add ko ba yung loan or i-deduct ko ba yung loan balance? Well, we take the point of view of the partner. Partner ho, not the partnership. Kasi meron tayong dalawang klaseng loan. Pwedeng loan to partner or loan from partner. So, when you say loan to partner, yung partnership, partnership ho, yung partnership, yun yung nagpautang doon sa partner natin. So therefore, if the partnership siya yung nagpautang doon sa partner, point of view niya, doon sa books ng partnership, naka-receivable yun. So receivable yun ng partnership. Pero, in the point of view of the partner, liability niya. So kapag loan to partner, ibabawas natin doon sa capital to get the interest of that partner. When you say loan from 
partner, the partnership, siya ho yung umutang dun sa partner natin. So therefore, the loan from partner presented in the partnership books, it is a liability of the partnership. Pointed ni partner, receivable niya. So itadagdag natin dun sa capital niya. So therefore, para ma-finalize lang yun, so loan to, titignan mo kung saan nakapresent yung loan. Pag naka-asset yun in the partnership books, ipabawas natin dun sa capital balance. Pero kapag yung loan naging liability dun sa partnership books, i-add natin dun sa capital para makuha natin yung tamang interest ng partners. So you always start at the interest of those partners. So dapat sa simula pa lang, tama niyong makukumpit natin. Now, uh, ano ko yung discount ng naisip ko? Um, eto yun. Uh, parang kalimutan mo na yung safe payment, kalimutan mo na yung CPP. Eto na lang. Kasi ito yung madaling tandaan eh. Kasi ito yung napapansin ko palagi. Palagi yan kapag nasolve ako na isang partnership, eto at eto yung nangyayari. So ano yun? Uh, before a partner receives his share nito sa payment, ano yun? Yung pera na matatanggap niya. Bago siya matanggap yung pera niya, kailangan i-absorb yung kinatawag na total loss total kinu. Na anong laman nun? Nandun yung gain or loss, on realization, nandun ho yung liquidation expenses, nandun yung maximum possible loss. So when you say maximum possible loss, that's the book value of your unrealized non-cash asset. So when you say unrealized non-cash asset, yun yung non-cash asset mo na hindi mo pa binibenta or not sold. Tapos isasama mo rin dun yung cash withheld. Kaso nga lang, when you say cash withheld, it should be specific. Dapat, cash withheld for future liquidation expenses. Yan po yung sumasama dun sa maximum possible loss natin. And syempre, pwede rin niya ma-absorb yung tinatawag yung deficiency or yung negative balance ng partner. So once ma-absorb niya lahat yan, makukuha niya na yung gusto niya, yung payment niya. Ito, it is always true. Ito nila yung tatandaan mo. So again, no, uh, bago matanggap ng partner yung pera na gusto niya, he must absorb yung tinatawag na total loss, total gain, gain or loss realization, liquidation expenses, maximum possible loss, tsaka yung deficiency or yung negative balance. Now, to compute uh, ng mabilis yung total cash paid to partners, uh, ito rin, uh, naisip ko rin to. So, you start with the total interest of the partners. So, ito yun, yung interest na lang doon. So, pagsasama-sama mo lang. Uh, tapos, plus minus uh, yung gain or, on gain or loss, this realization natin. Minus liquidation expenses, uh, minus yung maximum possible loss, and plus yung condoned liability sell. Uh, ano ho itong example ng condoned liability? Well, ibig sabihin ng condoned liability kasi diba ang, ang concept there is before the partner receives his money, all of the creditors, it must be paid. Babayanan ko dapat. So kunwari, uh, meron kang creditors na 500,000 yung, yung amount and on the final final uh, final installment, kunwari, sa huling huli, uh, nagbangkit doon na yung 100,000, yung sa creditors yan, it was waived. Waived po ah. So, ibig sabihin, hindi na siya pabayaran. So, yun po yung nakondong na liability. Or, sasabihin doon, if it's na 500,000, there is a compromised payment. Yun yung mga terms eh, para malaman mo kung kondong. Compromised, waived payment, ayan. So, kapag may waived or compromised payment, yung difference doon, yun yung kadagdagan na lang. It will be a king dun sa partner. So, matatanggap nila yun, kadagdagan sa payment mo lang. So yun yung malalaman natin kapag kondon. So yan din yung total cash paid to partners, lahat-lahat. Now, sir, saan mo ito nakuha? Inimbento mo? Hindi. Nakuha ko rin ito sa safe payment na pinagsama-sama ko lang lahat. Ito rin yun, sa safe payment. Now, ito, very important. Bakit? This is very helpful kapag on installment. Kasi syempre, iba yung interest ng partner sa simulang first installment, iba rin yung interest niya sa second installment. So to compute the second installment, ito yung partner's interest prior sa so first installment, uh, plus, plus minus gain or loss ulit, minus liquidation expenses, minus yung binayad sa kanya during that first installment. So yung makukumpito sa baba, ito na yung interest niya through the next installment. And dun sa next installment na yan, gagawin mo na naman ito para makumpute mo kung magkano yung mababayad sa kanya dun sa second. So i-absorb na naman yung tinatawag na total gain, total loss, or total gain. So again, uh, before the partner receives his share, there's a liquidation, ito yung kailangan niyang i-absorb, yung tinatawag na total loss, or total gain. Ito na lang, no by heart, ito na lang talaga yun, promise, ito na yun. Uh, gain or loss or realization, absorb niya yan, liquidation expenses, maximum possible loss, deficiency, or yung negative balance natin. Sige, uh, try natin, no? Yung sa first problem.
So, A, B, and C uh, partnership. Uh, tapos meron silang profit or loss agreement ng 60, 10, at 30. So, unang unang gagawin natin, hindi ko kumpit muna natin yung interest mismo nila uh, before yung start ng liquidation. So, alam natin, this is the capital balance plus minus yung loan balances nila. So, therefore, dun sa first problem natin, si A has a capital balance of 700,000. Uh, may loan balance ba siya? Yes, meron siya loan balance na presented in the partnership books as an asset or receivable. So therefore, point of view niya, liability niya. So ibabawas natin para makumpit natin yung kanyang tamang interest. So kalki tayo, 700,000 minus yung 500,000 na loan niya. So therefore, total interest of A, 200,000 at the start of liquidation. Uh, ito naman si B meron siyang negative na 650 na capital. However, uh, meron siyang loan na 1 million. And yung loan na yan, uh, point of view ng partnership, it is a liability. So therefore, sa kanya, receivable na yan. So yung dagdag natin. So yung 1 million, tapos i-minus lang natin yung 650. So yung kanyang interest before liquidation is 350. Si C naman, same as itong C, Si B yung loan niya, so may receivable na yun. So, 350 capital plus 100,000, so 450. So, these are the interest of the partners. Ito, these are the interest of the partners before mag-start daw yung liquidation. So, sabi natin, bago nila matanggap yung pera, i-absorb nila yung tinatawag na total loss or total gain. Na ano naman? Gain or loss of realization. Didistribute muna natin. So, complete natin. Uh, the partners decided not to liquidate. All partners are considered legally, personally insolvent. Tapos, the other non-cash assets were sold for 1 million 5. Now, anong classing installment yung problem number 1? It's considered as lump sum. Bakit? Kasi lahat daw ng non-cash assets na benta. So, calcate tayo. Uh, yung 1 million 500 na, na amount, less natin yung 2 million. So, lalabas sa calcate mo, negative, uh, 500,000. So, the 500,000, that is your loss on realization. So, distribute muna natin. 60%, 10%, Now, after distributing your loss, uh, check natin that there is liquidation expenses na 100,000. So, pa-absorb ulit natin, distribute ulit, times 60%, ten 10%, 30%. So, after absorbing yung liquidation expenses, ano yung next item sana dun sa total loss, total gain? Yung maximum possible loss. Ang tanong ko, Meron ba tayong maximum possible loss? Ang sagot, wala. Bakit, sir? Eh kasi sa installment liquidation lang yan, nang lumilitaw. Ito kasi, lump sum, so walang maximum possible loss. So therefore, check natin, baka meron ng negative balance. So, after checking, uh, nagkaroon ng negative balance itong si A na 160, tapos si B tsaka si C parehong positive na 290 tsaka 270. Now, pag nagkaroon ng deficiency ang isang partner, it is very important na malaman mo kung solvent ba siya or insolvent. Ibig sabihin ng solvent, he has still personal assets or net assets na pwedeng bayaran yung kanyang deficiency. Pero since all of those partners are legally declared insolvent, ibig sabihin wala na silang personal net asset. So, anong gagawin ngayon? Na, di ba, ano ulit ang core ng partnership? Ang core ng partnership is trust and confidence, agreement, sa hirap sa ginhawa, di ba? Sa hirap sa ginhawa, magsasama tayo, yung kasalanan ko, kasalanan niya rin, yung, yung deficiency ko, deficiency niya rin, yung shit ko, shit ko rin, shit mo rin, di ba? Na, parang ganun siya eh. So, yung 160,000 na to, maghahatian na lang yan ng ilang dalawa, may B and C. Now, ratio dapat, of course, yung 1 is to 3. So, times 1 over 4, 3 over 4. So, 
So easily, mo open mo na. Ayan na yung minahanap natin. So for number one, uh, how much cash was, re was received by B? Uh, di may sagot ka na. Letter A, yung 250,000. Uh, number two, how much cash was received by C? Pag di may sagot ka na rin, 150, letter B. Now, para matry lang din natin yung formula kanina na yung total cash paid to partners. So, paano daw ulit yun? Yun daw yung interest ng partners plus minus yung gain or loss of realization minus liquidation expenses minus maximum possible loss saka plus yung condom, liability sana if ever. So, para try natin. So, paki-add mo lahat ng ito. Uh, 200,000 plus 350 plus 450. So, yan yung total interest ng partners. Parang 1 million nata. Di ba? Ang 1 million, lahat-lahat. So, minus natin yung loss on realization na 500,000. Then, minus yung liquidation expenses na 100,000. And, wala naman tayong maximum possible loss. Di ba? Walang maximum possible loss. Wala rin naman na condone na liability. So, magkano ang loobas sa calcio? Ang loobas sa calcio ay 400,000. Which is, o oh, ano, 250 plus 150, yan po yung total cash paid to partners na 400,000. So, umagla na siya. Okay. Next. Uh, DEF partners have capital balances or interest as 1 million, 4 million, saka 5 million respectively. So before liquidation yan. Now since wala namang loan balance sa binigay, so these are the interest now of those partners before the start ng liquidation. Uh, malinaw naman na sinabi dyan, um, all of them are legally insolvent. Tapos, all again of the non-cash assets were sold. Can you underline na lang yun, yung all of the non-cash assets were sold? Second bullet. So therefore, this is another lump sum liquidation tayo. Uh, binigyan ka ng liquidation expenses ng 2 million. Tapos last bullet, very important, binigay na kung magkano yung tinanggap ni no, ni E. So ito yung problem na hit na hit mo kasi ito yung work back mo na naman. Di ba? Ito yung pinakaayaw mo talaga sa lahat sa liquidation. Pero fear not, kasi nga, yung discarte, always true. So tignan nyo uh, sabi daw dyan, uh, itong CE, si nakatanggap daw siya ng magkano? 2 million 5. Okay. So, between his interest and the amount paid to him, uh, meron siyang difference na 1 million 500. Now, profit or loss ratio nila uh, is 60, 10, and 30. Now, Papalikan mo na naman yung konsepto natin. Ano yun? Before the partner receives yung 2.5 million niya, inabsorb niya yung tinatawag na share niya saan? Doon sa total loss. So total loss, ito ang share niya. Gross up natin. 1 million 5 divided by 10%. Total loss mo, 15 million. So yung 15 million, distribute mo ulit times 60% times 30%. Question number one, uh, tinatanong, magkano din receive ni F? So parang 3 seconds lang, may sagot ka na. Hindi yan na po yung 500,000 na hinahanap natin. So kung nga rin, tatanungin, uh, magkano yung, sir, ano to? Ano ibig sabihin nito? Negative balance rate ng CD. Ibig sabihin nito, nung inabsorb niya na yung total loss, hindi niya kinaya, nag-negative balance siya. So therefore, kapag tatanungin, how much was received by B? Ang sagot mo, isang malaking sila, tapos malungkot siya kasi wala siyang pera na tinanggap. Wala siyang tinanggap. Sir, itong 8 million, i-allocate ko ba ba? Hindi na, kasi nga total loss na to eh. Ibig sabihin ng total loss, yung efficiency, kasama na ho dun yun. So kapag tinanong lang ito, magkani tatanggapin niya, zero na nga agad. So ang nakatanggap lang si E ng 2.5 million, si F, 500,000. Total cash paid to partners, 3 million. Now, second question, ang uh, tinatanong, magkano na yung sale or yung net proceeds from the sale of the non-cash asset? So, since lahat ng uh, non-cash asset na benta, meron ka ng book value, 
para makumpit mo yung cash that pinanggap mo, anong kailangan? Kailangan ko yung gain or loss on realization. So, saan mo siya pupulutin? O, di dito, ano to? Ito yung magic natin eh. Ano to? Total loss to eh. Anong laman niya? Ito yung gain or loss. Ito yung liquidation expenses. Ito yung maximum possible loss. Ito yung negative o yung deficiency. So, yung negative, nandun na yun eh. Ito po yung 8 million. Next question. Maximum possible loss, meron ba? Wala eh. Kasi ito ay isang lump sum liquidation. Liquidation expenses given, yes, meron. 2 million. So, divide all smiles. Calculator ka na lang. 15 million minus 8 minus 2. Lalabas, negative. 5 million. Na ito yung loss on realization natin. So, total book value nung non-cash asset mo, which is 17 million, pag minus mo lang yung loss of realization na 5 million, official answer is letter C, 12 million proceeds dun sa non-cash asset. Third problem, uh, medyo comprehensive ng konti. Bakit? Kasi installment, binigyan ka ng dalawang buwan, uh, January, tsaka February. So, ang gagawin natin, uh, ganun pa rin, ano? So, we get again the partner's interest muna sa January. So, wala naman loan balances yung partners natin. So, ito yung 100,000, uh, 500,000, and 400,000. So, profit or loss ratio nila is 50, 30, tsaka 20. Now, when all of them were declared legally insolvent, so wala naman silang pera. Now, on January 1, uh, the non-cash assets now of 1 million were sold uh, at a gain of 100,000. So, this repeat ulit natin yung gain ng 50, 30, tsaka 20. Um, next, liquidation expenses of 50,000. So, this repeat ulit ng 50, 30, and 20. Now, next item, ano daw? Maximum possible loss. Ang tanong ko, uh, in this case, meron ba tayong maximum possible loss? Ang sabi yes. Bakit? Kasi installment na tayo. Now, to compute your maximum possible loss, sabi natin, dalawa yung ulangan yan. Ano daw yun? Yan yung book value nung unrealized ng cash asset mo tsaka yung cash with help for future liquidation expenses. So, unahin natin yung book value nung land cash asset. So, the book value of your non-cash asset na unrealized non-cash asset na nabenta, uh, na hindi nabenta. So, sabi ito sa first bullet, uh, 1 million daw yung nabenta. So, total non-cash asset is 1 million 4. So, 1 million 4 less 1 million. So, this is the book value of your unrealized non-cash asset. So, 400,000. Tapos plus yung kinatawag na cash withheld. So given naman, uh, sabi mo dyan, third bullet. It is estimated that the liquidation expenses amounted to 150. Kailan daw yun? The following installment. So yan yung for future liquidation expenses. So cash withheld po yan. So plus 150. So our total maximum possible loss is 500. 
50,000. Ito, 550 na to. Ahatiin ulit natin. So, times 50%, 30%, 20%. So, check ulit natin kung may negative balance tayo. So, upon checking CA, nagkaroon ng negative na 150. Now, since lahat daw sila ay personally, legally insolvent, walang pera. So, yung 150 pagkahati yung ulit yan ni P tsaka ni C. So, based na doon sa ratio nila, ng P is to 2. So, times 3 over 5, 2 over 5. So, kung matatanggap ng no, B ay 260, uh, si C naman 240,000. So, for number one question, um, what amount of cash received for my partner C? So, official answer is letter C, uh, 240,000. Number two, what is the share of B in the maximum possible loss? So, in total natin is 550. So, ang share na ito yung nasa gitna. So, ang share ni... B official answer is letter D, 165,000. And for number 3, ito. Um, magtanong, no, what is the amount of total cash with health? So, kindly underline the word na total. Uh, sir, bakit? Kasi when you say total, cash with health. When you say total, cash with health, dalawa kasi ang laman yan. Unang-una, nandyan yung for future liquidation expenses. And, nandito rin yung unpaid balance dun sa creditors natin. Yung unpaid dun sa layup. So, para makuha natin tama, uh, dun sa total cash with health, at part na dyan yung 150,000. Ito yung for future liquidation expenses. And for the liability, uh, based dun sa number 4 na bullet ng January, uh, only 20% of the liabilities to third persons were settled, sabi. Uh, so, ibig sabihin, no 80%, hindi pa nababayaran. So, kalki tayo, 2 million total liabilities times 80%. So, unpaid natin is 1,600,000. So, ang total natin, official answer is letter C, uh, 1,750,000. So, baka lang mag-raise mag ng question. Sir, yung 80% pa nito, since hindi ko binayaran, can I consider it as condoned or waived na payment? Ang sagot, hindi. Bakit? Eh, kasi meron pa namang next installment eh. And isa pa, hindi naman explicit na sinabi na na-condone yan or na-waived. So, huwag mong i-assume na kunwari 30% na binayaran. Yung 70%, i-waived na. Hindi yung pwedeng ganun. I-assume natin lagi na dap dapat the following installment, mababayaan ng lahat yun. Unless, yun nga, may stipulation or may sasabihin na it was compromised or no waive siya. So, again, yung waive payment na yan sa liability sa yung compromised, kailangan sabihin. Huwag natin yun i-assure. So, regarding ulit, um, cash with help. Eh, sir, what if silent po yung, yung cash with help? Kunwari, sinabi lang, cash with help, 100,000. Yun lang, ha? walang word na total. Kasi pag may total, alam natin, dalawa yung laman. Now, kapag cash with health lang, cash with health lang sinabi, i-assume natin o i-consider natin siya as yun lang yung for li uh, future liquidation expenses. So, again, no, kapag cash with health lang ang nakalagay, walang word na total, i-assume natin yun, i-consider natin siya as yun yung for future liquidation expenses. Now, para dun sa number four na, na question, E di ito na yung sa second installment natin. So this is for the month of February. Now, ito na yung sinasabi ko kanina, uh, yung nilagay ko dito computation, na dapat 
makonfute ko yung interest nila dun sa second installment or dun sa next installment natin. So, binigay ko na yung new formula nyo. So, practice na lang natin. So, save profit or loss ratio yung 50-30 tsaka 20. So, hubit natin kung magkano yung magiging interest nitong BA dun sa second installment. So, based dun sa loads natin, paano daw yun? So, dito natin, ito yung guide natin. So, ito yung interest niya, prior installment. Uh, may a plus gain, tag it out, uh, 100,000 plus ho yung 50 na share din sa gain. Uh, minus yung liquidation expenses na 25,000 and minus yung binayaran sa kanya. Now, since walang binayaran sa kanya, so therefore, yung kanyang interest is only 125,000 on the second installment. Si B naman, uh, interest prior, 500,000 plus yung 30 nag-share like, nyo sa gain minus liquidation expenses na 15,000 and minus yung binayaran natin sa kanya na 260,000. So therefore, yung interest niya, second installment, 225. Last, itong CC, 400,000 plus 20 minus 10,000, minus yung binayari natin na 240,000, interest niya, second installment, 170. So, once makumpit mo lang tama, itong mga interest nila, this is the next installment, same concept na naman, ipapa-absorb ko ulit yung pinatawag na total loss or total gain na nakapaste na yung information this sa February. So, this time, sa February daw, then, the remaining non-cash assets were sold at a loss ng 100. So, distribute ulit, 50%, 30%, Next, uh, nagbigay ng liquidation expenses ng 100,000. So, hatiin ulit natin, 50%, 30%, 20%. Next item, ano sana? MPL or maximum possible loss. Ang tanong po, may MPL pa ba sa February? Sabot wala na. Sir, bakit po? Eh kasi last installment na to eh. Sir, panit po na naman. Kaya sabi yung the remaining ng cash assets na benta na. So wala nang kasunod. So check na lang natin. tinatanong itong si A, magkano yung tinanggap niya. So, kaya siya lang sa list letter B. Uh, 200 at uh, 25,000. So, si B, if ever tanongin, meron tayong sagot. 195. Si C, may sagot din. Yung 130,000. So before liquidation, um, meron silang interest ng 15 million, 12.5, tsaka 7.5 million na may profit or loss ratio ng 20-30, tsaka 50%. Uh, tapos, uh, nagpigay ng information, uh, nagsabi na dyan meron liquidation expenses na were 2 million. Tapos non-cash assets with book value of 30 were sold. Tapos sabi 40% ng liabilities na bayaran. 
and merong 3 million na cash with help for future liquidation expenses and yung pinaka last no uh, sabi daw dyan, si you nakatanggap daw siya ng 10 million So against doon sa kanyang interest, uh, meron na naman siyang inabsorb ng share niya sa total loss ng 5 million. So yung 5 million na yan, uh, pwede natin i-cross up para makuha natin yung total loss. So divided by yung 20%, so total loss natin ay 25. Tapos distribute ulit natin times 30% times 50%. inahanap uh, dun sa unang requirement is what is the amount received by F. So may sagot ka na kagad. Ito na yung letter C. 5 million. And uh, for number 2, uh, magkano ulit yung net proceeds natin dun sa share ng non-cash asset. So hahatiin ulit natin. Alam na natin ito. Gain or loss. Liquidation expenses. Maximum possible loss yung negative balance. So, ito na po yung negative balance. So, minus 5,000, uh, 5 million. Uh, next, liquidation expenses given, which is 2 million. Now, as for your maximum possible loss, meron kaya ito? Ang sagot, yes, meron. Uh, bakit? Kasi, hindi naman daw lahat ng non-cash asset na benta, only 30 million was sold. So, our maximum possible loss again, um, ito yung total book value natin, which is 40 million. So, minus yung nabenta na 30 million. So, matitira ay 10 million for our book value, yung unrealized non-cash asset. And plus yung cash withheld for future liquidation expenses ng 3 million, which is given. So, total maximum possible loss natin ay 30. So, calculate na lang, uh, 25 million less 5 less 13 less 2 million. So, meron kang loss on realization again of 5 million. So, the net proceeds natin, so 30 million yung nabenta na book value. So, minus na lang yung loss na 5 million. So, official answer natin is letter A. 25 million net proceeds dun sa sale ng non-cash asset. Now, last problem, number 5 million, 5 million 4, tsaka yung 3 million 700. Tapos binigyan ka ng total liabilities. Kaso nga lang, yung laman ng total liabilities, meron low balance na kasama. So, kalyo ka, uh, uh, 4 million 400, less mo yung 600,000 na loan. Uh, yung lalabas sa kalyo mo, yung 3.8 million. Yan lang yung liabilities natin sa outside creditors. Tapos binigyan ka ng cash balance, 800,000. Now, ano ang challenge yung or, or ano yung kailangan mo makompute? Kailangan mo na makompute lahat-lahat ng book value ng non-cash asset natin. So, kalagin tayo, uh, 2 million 5 plus yung 5 million 4 plus yung 3 million 7 so total na capital lahat yun uh, plus yung total liabilities natin na 4 million 400 
So yun ako yung total asset natin. Unless yung 800,000 na cash, your non-cash asset at book value is 15,200,000. Okay, so pakilagay dyan na non-cash asset is 15,200,000. Now for number one, ang tinatanong kasi, what if daw, Uh, yung say, yung unang non-cash asset natin na 7.4 million ay binenta mo siya at book value. So, kaya hindi-underline po yun, yung sold at book value. Tapos, yung the rest of the non-cash asset were sold at a loss of, of, of 4.2 million. Now, uh, para makumbib natin kung magkano lahat-lahat ng cash at para makita nyo kung saan nang galing yung cash na yan. Well, ito po yung formula natin na to get the cash paid to partners. Since dalawang benta, ng ating non-cash asset, ibig sabihin, it is one installment. So, gagawin natin, ikaw-compute po natin yung total cash na binayaran dun sa first installment, tsaka natin i-add dun sa second installment natin. So, dun sa una, so, ilatag lang muna natin yung formula natin. So, yung total interest muna, uh, kung pita tayo, uh, 2,500,000 capital ni A uh, plus yung capital ni C ng 5,400,000 and plus yung kay J na 3,700,000 and plus yung loan balance niya na 600,000. So, total interest ng partners is 12,200,000 para dun sa first installment. Now, on the first installment, kung sa una daw, pinenta daw yung 7,400,000 at book value. So, ano ibig sabihin nun? Kung magkano yung book value niya, yun din yung tinanggap na cash. So, therefore, there is no gain or loss on the realization. Hindi wala. Um, liquidation expenses, uh, wala naman pinigay sa atin. So, hindi siya nagbayad. So, huwag natin na, huwag na natin hanapin yun. So, walang pinigay. Now, maximum possible loss. Ang tanong ko, meron ba? Ang sagot, yes. Sir, bakit po? Eh, kasi, hindi lahat ng non-cash asset mo na benta. So, paano natin makukompute yung maximum possible loss? So, ito yung total book value kanina na nakompute natin, which is yung 15,200,000 and minus yung binenta na 7,400,000 na book value. So, since wala naman binigay na cash withheld, ibig sabihin nun, yung laman ng maximum possible loss mo ano lang, hindi yung book value ng unrealized ng cash asset. So, yung maximum possible loss natin is 7,800,000. Condone liability, uh, wala naman nung sinabi. So, 12,200,000 minus yung 7,800,000. Cash paid on the first installment is 4,400,000. Now, second, installment natin. So, ganun pa rin yung gagawin natin. So, ito pa rin yung interest. Uh, plus minus yung gain or loss. Uh, minus liquidation expenses. Minus maximum possible loss. And yung condo. Plus condo. Ulit. Ito lang muna yung challenge mo. Uh, paano daw i-co-compute yung interest ng partner? So, based nga doon sa formula ulit natin. So, kahit kita, no? interest, total interest prior installment, 12,200,000. Uh, wala naman siyang gain or loss. Wala rin tayong liquidation expenses. Minus na lang yung binayaran natin na 4,400,000. So, the interest on the second installment, total is 7,800,000. Now, next installment, second installment, uh, sabi ho dyan na binabenta daw yung natitira at a loss. So, lahat ng 4,200,000 considered as loss of realization, so minus 4,200,000 tayo. Um, wala namang binigay na liquidation expenses. Wala ka ng maximum possible loss, eh kasi nga natitira, nabenta na. So, therefore, wala ka ng uh, isa pang installment. And wala rin kundo na liability. 
So, total cash na pinayaran sa second installment is 3,600,000. So, kapag inad natin yan, 3,600,000 plus 4,400,000. So, lalabas ni sa what official answer, letter A. Total na pinayaran mo is 8,000,000. So, next na requirement, um, after exhausting the non-cash assets of the partnership, um, assuming all partners has personal assets more than their personal liabilities, so kindly underline po yun, na has personal assets more than its personal liabilities, kapag ganyan, ang personal assets are greater than the personal liabilities, it means that all of those partners are considered solvent, may pera ho sila. So, again, all lahat ng partners daw are solvent. Now, uh, again, ulit, ang gawin natin, uh, kunin muna yung interest nila at the start ng liquidation. So, si, si A, yung capital balance lang niya na 2 million 5. Tapos si C naman, ang uh, total interest niya, since may loan siya, which is a liability of the partnership, receivable niya yun, so plus 2 sa capital niya. So, yun yung 5 million 400 plus 600,000 or 6 million. And si Jay naman, yung kanyang interest ay yung capital lang, which is yung 3,700,000. Now, ito yung pinaka, uh, import, isa, 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 isa sa mga pinaka-importante na statement dyan, no? Sir, ano ibig sabihin ng exhausting the non-cash asset or after exhausting the non-cash asset? Ano ibig sabihin nun? Ang ibig sabihin nun, kung magkano yung book value ng non-cash asset mo, all of those book value, you considered it as loss already. Loss na lahat yun. So, wala kang tinanggap na pera. So again, no, ibig sabihin ng after exhausting the non-cash assets, it means all of the book value, o yung 15,200,000, all of those were considered as loss. So yung 15,200,000, distribute ulit natin sa kanila ng 25%, 35%, 40%. So, walang liquidation expenses, wala din maximum possible loss kasi lahat naman daw uh, nabenta na or lahat kinitinusider as loss. So, check na lang tayo for negative balances. Now, after uh, absorbing lahat ng loss na yan, yung or yung laman na is yung loss on realization. So, makapansin mo, a negative nitong si A, tsaka itong si C. Kaso nga lang, since they are considered as what? Solvent eh. So, ibig sabihin, yung pera sila to cover up their deficiency. Now, the question there is, sir, uh, yung solvent ba, kahit ano ang pwede niyang ibigay? I mean, kahit ano ang amount ang pwede niyang ibigay sa partnership. Ang sagot lang dyan, only the, uh, the solvent partners, so kung mara ito, si A, tsaka si J, they can only contribute additional cash up only up to their deficiency lang. So si A, ang kaya lang niyang itagdag, dapat yung 1 million 3 lang. And ito si J naman, ang kaya lang itagdag, ay dapat hanggang 2 million 380,000 lang. So ang question kasi, uh, magkano daw yung cash na kailangan i-invest ng partners para masatisfy daw yung claims at ito na yung katagtagan. So, at mo lang, 1 million 3 plus yung 2 million 380. So, official answer natin is uh, letter A. 3 million 680.
And for number three, so lahat at ulit muna natin, yung kanilang interest. So same lang dun sa previous natin. Now, if C receives daw 2 million, 255. So, against his interest, uh, meron siyang difference na 3 million, 745. So, yan ulit yung share niya, dun sa total loss, so, i-cross up ulit natin, divided by 35%. So, total loss of 10 million 700. So, distribute muna natin ulit. Uh, times 25, times 40 percent. is the loss on realization. So, dito na natin siya ulit kukunin. So, ito na ulit yung gain or loss, liquidation expenses, maximum possible loss, yung negative balance. So, as for the negative balance, pakiat na lang ang dalawang to. Uh, 175,000 plus yung 580. So, a total of 755,000. Uh, next, may maximum possible loss ba? So, wala na mas sinabi. So, wala na yan. Liquidation expenses, wala din. So, calculate ka na lang na 10 million 700 minus yung 755. So, official answer is letter T. Uh, meron kang loss on realization na 9 million 4, 9 million 945. Sige, so, tiyo din Number one, um, definition of term. It refers to the process of converting the non-cash assets of the partnership and distributing the total cash to the creditors and the remainder to partners natin. So that is the definition of letter C, um, liquidation. So it is converting your non-cash to cash. Tapos babayaran natin yung creditors and yung partners natin. So in number two, in liquidation of a general partnership, which of the following credits shall be paid first? So, sino-sino ko yung munang-munang binabayaran? So, based on this uh, process or sa sequence, no, ang kailangan mo bayaran talaga muna is yung outside creditors, bago yung partners natin. So, official answer is letter A. Those owing to third person muna, o sila yung outside creditors natin. Uh, number three, in, a, in the liquidation of a limited partnership, which of the following credits, shall be paid last. So, whether general or limited, ang huling-huling binabayaran natin is yung capital balances ng partners natin. So, official answer is letter D. Those owing to partners for their capital contribution. Uh, number four, ito yung katulad dun sa theory, dun sa formation natin, which is yung burden ng partnership natin. So, kapag general partners tayo, our liability, hanggang saan tayo have kayang habulin, up to our separate assets. So, official answer is letter B. They are liable pro rate up to the extent of their separate assets. And for number 5 naman, what if limited partner ka lang? Hanggang saan ka kayang habulin? So, kapag limited partner, the difference between general and limited is, kapag limited, kaya lang siyang habulin up to their capital contribution only. So, official answer is letters. So, hanggang doon na sa extent ng capital contribution. Yeah. So, next week, I call for the liquidation. Okay.